Hello folks, I'm UK Air Rifleman and today I'd like to share some knowledge and field craft with my subscribers relating to the control of corvids with air rifles. It's an important part of hunting to know your quarry's habits intimately. The most efficient hunters almost have a sixth sense and can read their quarry, the signs of their quarry and the land their quarry is on like a book. I wouldn't say I'm there yet that it could take a lifetime, but I'm hoping to pass on some basic knowledge of this family of quarry species and the various methods to allow you, the air rifle marksman, to get one step ahead and get the chance of a shot. The members of the family Corvidae that we are allowed to control is characterised in the UK by six species. These include the carrion crow, Corvus carone, the hooded crow, Corvus cornix, the magpie, Pica pica, the jackdaw, Corvus manigula, the rook, Corvus frugilagus, and the jay, Garrulus glandarius. I am only including species that are covered by the English general licences that are part of the Wildlife and Countryside Act of 1981 regarding the control of pest birds. Therefore the raven is not included. It is a protected species. These birds are all highly intelligent, wary and possess sharp eyesight and can be found in practically every habitat available in the British Isles from towns and cities to the mountains. However some species such as the jay are normally only found in dense woodland not frequented by people being an extremely wary and shy bird. The reasons these birds are on the general licences that cover us to shoot them is for several reasons. They are an agricultural pest that damage seeded, shooting or standing crops, causing a reduction of yield to the farmer. They also pose a risk to livestock in that they take their expensive feed. They also dung over it presenting a disease risk but the most harrowing reason for their destruction in the agricultural environment is their propensity for pecking the eyes out of lambs or lambing ewes. Horrifying. They also damage the biodiversity of the habitats that they are found in by taking the eggs and nestlings of songbirds. This is the main reason the jay is on the general licence. For shooting estates that run driven game shoots, the rearing of game birds can be severely hampered by the presence of corvids as the game bird's feed is taken and the eggs and young are taken from the nests also. The link between a healthy shooting estate that actively controls the population of corvids and high biodiversity on that estate is irrefutable despite what some activists would say. But in saying the above Corvids are also extremely important to the ecosystem, therefore their eradication is not the goal of the air rifle marksman, but responsible control is. So let's talk about each species in a little more detail. The carrion crow can be found almost anywhere within its range. They are a large bird and on the whole entirely black with a deep sheen. They are considered amongst the most intelligent of animals on earth. They are largely solitary, but frequently seen in pairs or small flocks. Their diet includes almost everything the bird can swallow, from grain to carrion, hence its name and its important niche in the ecosystem. They can also be found in mixed flocks with the rook and the two species regularly roost together. The hooded crow is exactly the same except for its grey plumage and its range. In the British Isles, this bird is mainly found in Scotland, Ireland and Northern Ireland. The two birds are distinguished from the rook by the lack of white pigment at the base of the beak and their differing head profiles. They are further distinguished from the raven by their much smaller size and their calls. The magpie can also be found anywhere within its range. They are a medium sized bird with black and white plumage and a long tail. They are also intelligent and occupy a similar niche to the carrion crow, eating almost anything they can get their beaks on. They are particularly noted to be a problem to songbird and game bird nesting 
and an agricultural pest, especially on the farmyard. The jackdaw is also a medium-sized bird. Characterised by a relatively short beak and grey plumage on the upper parts of its body, the rest of the bird is black. It is mainly an agricultural pest and frequents farmyards in its neighbouring fields. It takes livestock feed and damages crops, but it can also cause chimney fires as the animal has a habit of making nests in chimneys. There is also literature to suggest that the species was once a serious pest in the urban environment, pecking the foil caps off milk bottles and causing disease in humans. Milk is no longer delivered using foil caps. The rook is a large bird, also covered almost entirely in black shiny plumage, and at a distance are difficult to distinguish from the carrion crow. They can be identified by their higher pitched call at a distance, but it is their beak and head profile that is the main identifying feature. Their beaks are longer, with a patch of white or lighter coloured pigment at the base of the beak. The head also has a distinctive dome shape to it. Mainly found in the agricultural and or farmyard environment, where it feeds on grain and invertebrates, it causes damage to crops and poses a risk to livestock by taking both their feed or dunging over it. They are known to create vast colonies called rookeries in high trees on a hillside and building huge bulbous nests. The jay is a colourful member of the Corvidae family, almost exclusively found in the woodland environment. It is an extremely wary and shy bird and attests to anyone who intends to hunt them. They have very sharp eyesight and are also highly intelligent. The main reason they are considered a pest is their propensity to raid the nests of songbirds and game birds. They are also a pest when it comes to the feeding of game birds. They do however seem relatively rare and I myself am always in two minds whether to shoot one or not. Yet since I started shooting I have never really been given the opportunity. I believe if you are controlling vermin on a shooting estate then the bird should be targeted. However, if you are not on a shooting estate then the targeting is entirely at your own discretion. So, let's talk about tactics now the biology lecture is out of the way. There are several methods to control corvids with air rifles. They all obviously involve the attempt to get one to sit still within range of your weapon. It definitely helps. Roo shooting is a form of static hunting and is a popular way to control carrion crow, hooded crow and rooks. First you must identify a roost either by direct observation or by the presence of droppings and nests. The droppings aren't the most foolproof method, as you may well be in a wood pigeon or pheasant roost, especially if there are no nests to be seen. Observations of the birds at almost last light is the most definitive way to identify a corvid roost, but to be honest, the farmer is most likely to tell you where they are anyway, so there's no special tuning into the environment or developing a hunting sixth sense in this case. The birds are almost stupid when coming into roost and can be easily targeted. They come in to settle for the night almost as it is getting too dark to see by, so a scope with good quality bright optics is a must. A low magnification setting and an illuminated reticle may also be needed. It is best to enter the wood about two hours before sunset. During this time other quarry can be targeted such as wood pigeon and grey squirrel. Despite the fact that the birds are almost stupid when coming into roost, full camouflage is a must, including a face covering and gloves, but a hide is not as necessary as other methods. It is also important to remain static. Do not use lamps until the session is over, and when the session is over, attempt to retrieve what you have shot wherever possible. You are mainly shooting at silhouettes, therefore identification is important. Another useful tip is to let a few birds come in and settle, especially if out of range, and choose your shots wisely once a few have settled to maximise your chances of success. This method is productive in the winter time, when the branches of the trees are bare, 
and it's also a good time to go out when the moon is large and bright. But it can also be productive in the springtime when the birds are breeding. The fledgling rooks called branches are the main target and this is possibly the only corvid that is edible. Decoying and baiting corvids is another form of static hunting and could encompass a single video all by itself but I will attempt to explain the tactics as best as possible. First a suitable location must be found and good observation of your quarry over a long period of time may be needed to find the spot, especially out in the fields. In the farmyard environment this is less important. It is also useful if you can identify a food source they frequent out in the field, such as a muck heap or feeding trough. The food sources in the farmyard, again, are also obvious. In fact, corvids are more easily targeted in the farmyard environment overall, all year round, using decoys and baits or just by sitting in ambush. OK, so let's talk about decoys and baits. The best decoy is a shot bird, but this isn't always possible or available. In fact, a shot bird from another permission is even more effective due to their territorial tendencies, but again, not always possible. So a plastic decoy must be used. There are two main ones available which should be used. The full-bodied flocked crow decoy and the full-bodied flocked magpie decoy are about the only ones really. Shells or fold up decoys are okay for shotgunners but we need these birds to land either on the ground or in a tree within range and be fooled long enough for a headshot on the hole. However at closer ranges on the medium sized corvids a heart and lung shot is also effective. The decoy should be placed roughly facing into the wind. A bird of prey decoy can also be effective, especially if paired up with a shot corvid with a few feathers pulled out, so it's made to look like it's being caught. But you must be very careful when using bird of prey decoys where members of the public are concerned. In recent months it has been suggested to people to report anyone using bird of prey decoys due to the fear of bird of prey persecution. Also it makes the birds extremely skittish and aggressive rarely keeping still for a humane shot. Baits are also effective, especially when paired up with decoys. Baits can include shot or roadkill rabbits, sliced open exposing the viscera on the field, made to look like an abandoned fox kill. Chickens eggs, real or fake, either on the bare grass or in a fake nest. Also bread, wetted and or pegged down. And one I'm yet to try, I'm not sure anybody has come up with this one themselves. Uh, day old chicks used to feed exotic pets. A small pile of grain on the farmyard could serve you well too. I've also seen a whole fox used as a decoy or bait for corvids, propped up in the field, but this is most effective again for shotgunners. Most foodstuffs can be used, but the ones described are the most effective. So that's baits and decoys out of the way. How do we do the rest of the ambush? Well the hide is the next most important part. Again an entire video could be devoted to the hide method but I will attempt to keep it brief. The idea of a hide is to create a space for you and your equipment where you can see and shoot at your targets yet remain concealed and as comfortable as possible. The best place is to site the hide is under a large and shaded tree in a natural depression in a hedgerow or in the farmyard amongst the bales of hay if possible. There's four types of hide. One is a permanent hide built and camouflaged in the ideal location and left there to use over and over again. Only the luckiest of shooters are allowed to do that so I'll move quickly on to the natural hide. A bush or hedgerow that you have enough room to comfortably conceal yourself in is what I mean here. Again, only the luckiest of us will find one where our quarry will also be. Some shooters build a latticework of discarded or dead flora and use that as the front of it too. The other is the traditional hide, made with hide poles or a frame built from suitable materials. 
and a camouflage net or three draped over the frame. Concealment is further augmented by the use of weeds and flora in the vicinity of the hide and weaved into the net. Be careful here. If you are unsure whether you should cut it, don't. It's the quickest way to lose a permission if you mince a farmer's hedgerow up. For corvid shooting I found a roof or at least a natural overhead structure to be absolutely essential, but not so much for decoying pigeons, another subject that will be discussed in a further video. The fourth and final type is the fairly modern invention of the pop-up hide, basically a pop-up tent with a camouflage pattern on it. These on their own are okay, but the use of a camo net is advised to further augment the blending in of it and to partially conceal the opening where you intend to shoot from. They can however be placed almost anywhere. So what do we do on the day? Well the hide should be set up either prior to going out to shoot or done before dawn or even during the night before. This stops the birds seeing you set it up and it gives them chance to not see it as a danger. They really are not stupid creatures and if you rock up at noon, bang a hide up and put a crow deek out, you will find that not a lot will happen. You must be in the hide and ready 30 minutes to an hour before sunrise. Place your decoys and bait well within range of the rifle. I recommend pacing out 25 yards and placing a single or pair of decoys and a bait at that point. The birds generally land further out than closer in, giving you anything from 30 to 50 yards. If you can place your hide with a tree within range, it will also increase your chances. You should also be camouflaged from head to foot and the muzzle of the rifle should be camoed up too. There are several methods to do this. Camo tape is about the easiest, but neoprene silencer covers are really good. Mine are actually made by me using a Jack Pike moderator cover, which is far too big and is actually made for FAC rifles. I cut it to size and sew it up using a half inch stitch to pull the cut sides flush. It's made about five millimeters smaller than the diameter of the silencer and is therefore a tension fit. They do a great job of concealment and protection of the finish on the moderator. I'll do a DIY video for those very soon. While out shooting and during the shooting session, it's absolutely essential that you follow the following guidelines. Try your absolute best to nail the first bird that comes in. If you miss it, you will have a hard time for the rest of the session. Once a bird is down, do not rush out of the hide to retrieve it straight away. Corvids are like gangsters. They go a bit bonkers when they see one of their own knocked over. And nine times out of ten, one that's seeing red will give you another opportunity. They are also naturally fascinated with dead things. The birds will swoop, call loudly to one another and generally be aggressive. During this period of madness, so long as you remain undetected, you could rack up quite a few birds in a short space of time. Only once this period of madness is over and peace descends, and you think the birds have moved away, should you leave the hide to tidy up, or place your shot birds out as decoys. Another useful tip is to place the decoys out with one on the back with the wings spread out, and another bird standing over it as if they are fighting. But, unfortunately, most likely, this will be the end of the session anyway, as you've been detected, but it is worth trying again. So I'll move on to farmyards. You can use the decoys and baits methods in the farmyard environment too, and a hide of some description is a good idea too. But a dark corner of a shed or hiding behind or inside farm machinery can and will suffice. Some farms have bales of hay racked up and there is the possibility of using those to hide in too. There is literally food for the birds everywhere. So decoying and baiting is rarely necessary unless you are attempting to break the habit of the birds and get them to go to a favourable position for you to shoot at them. If not decoying and baiting, then a few moments of observation of the habits of the birds can help you hatch a plan. Shot placement and discipline 
is massively important in and around farm buildings and livestock. Common sense is an absolute must. Safety is paramount and shots with safe fallout zones or good solid backstops should be planned for. The livestock also represent a danger to you. So if you are close to them, be extremely careful and never take your eyes off them. If you are using a hide, then wear camo. But if not, just turn up in sensible clothing, as the birds are used to seeing people there all day. If you choose to stalk around the farmyard, then if you are a right-handed shooter, walk around anti-clockwise, with the walls to your left. This allows you to peek round corners and take shots without exposing your entire frame. The opposite is true for left-handed shooters. Stalking Stalking is a form of mobile hunting where you approach your quarry and attempt to get into a favourable position for a shot, hopefully undetected, rather than waiting for something to come along. In my experience, due to this family's intelligence, wariness and extremely sharp eyesight, this form of hunting isn't likely to achieve much in the way of results. However, as previously mentioned, on the farmyard it is quite possible to achieve a shot or two. Targeting jays. Most jays are actually shot on squirrel or pheasant feeders as a secondary target from behind a hide or blind in the wood and there is no real method to target them that I am aware of except the chance encounter during a static hunt. If you do get that chance encounter, buy a lottery ticket because it's your lucky day. Right, I think that about covers it folks. I hope you find it useful and it gets more corvids in the bag for you. I will hopefully be putting the theory into practice and shooting a few corvids very soon. For an expert practical observation, I recommend another hunter's work, both on his corvid chaos DVDs and his YouTube channel, at least until I reach his level of expertise. Search for hunter's vermin. Bye bye for now folks and I'll catch you on the next one.